The following is intended for mature audiences only. Discretion is advised. Pillow fight, pillow fight. This is so fun. Oh, pillow fighting. Why is it so fun? Pillow fight. Hi everyone, it's me, Yamini. If you like Pillow Fight, please be sure to give it a follow. And if you listen on Apple Podcasts, rate and review it. That would mean the world to me. Enjoy the episode and thank you so much for listening to Pillow Fight. If you're following me on literally any platform, you probably know just how much I poop. And let me tell you, wiping your butt raw with toilet paper does not remove all the shit that's sitting on it. Thankfully, there's now a sleek bidet attachment that clips onto your existing toilet and sprays your butt completely clean with fresh water. It's called Tush and it's the best thing you can do for your butt. Tushy sprays directly to your ass and removes the poop completely so you aren't sitting on bacteria that leads to nasty things like hemorrhoids, yeast infections, UTIs, and itchy assholes. And a Tushy bidet cuts toilet paper use by 80% so it pays for itself in just a few months. Join millions of happy Hello Tushy customers, including me, right now and have a clean butt with every flush. Go to hellotushy.com slash yams to get 10% off your order. That's hellotushy.com slash Y-A-M-Z. Hello fight. Pillow fight, pillow fight. Is yours made of goose? We got feathers flying everywhere. Mine's made of goose. Pillow fight, pillow fight. This is so fun. Pillow fighting. Why is this so fun? Pillow fight. Today on Pillow Fight, I'm joined by Vinny Thomas, a Chicago-based comedian, actor, writer, and staunch zoology enthusiast. He has performed at Second City and I.O. in Chicago and has been spending his pandemic making a plethora of videos that feature aliens, animals, and even the occasional human. You can find more of him on Twitter and Instagram at Vin underscore A, so that's V-I-N-N underscore A-Y-Y. Your listening experience today can be enhanced by a few visual supplements that you'll be able to find on our Twitter at PillowFightPod. On this episode, Vinny and I talk about white leftists, how ugly King Tut actually was, and we get to the bottom of the question on everyone's minds. What is Vinny's ethnicity? Fuck. Mary? Kill. Fuck, Mary, kill. Okay, so for Fuck, Mary Kill, I went with a theme this time and I went with the like most memorable to me conservative versus celebrity feuds of this year so far. Ooh, okay. So number one, obviously this is on everyone's mind. This past week, rapper Lil Nas X dropped the music video for his new song Montero, which featured him twerking on and seducing a stylized depiction of Satan. And so lots of conservatives were outraged that he was like glorifying the devil. And so, you know, this week Lil Nas X became the latest in a long legacy of musicians who have sparked satanic panic. Number two, a couple weeks ago, Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion performed WAP at the Grammys and Candace Owen went on Tucker Carlson right after to decry the performance. She was like, it's celebrating perversity in America and that's bad. Candace Owens also commented on every situation here. I think Candace Owens has commented on. So, you know, she loves to talk. She loves to talk. She's at the background of everything, but you know, she, she went on Tucker Carlson and said it was bad. Cardi B was like, oh, cool. We're on Fox news. You know, she was like taking it with pride. But then they got into this huge back and forth that eventually turned into like messy, messy, messy drama where Cardi B was making claims about like Candace's Owens husband and they were like old tweets pulled up and it just it got crazy. And then number three, back in January, Ted Cruz tweeted that if Biden wants to rejoin the Paris Climate Agreement, that means that he's saying he cares more about the people of Paris than the people of Pittsburgh. And Seth Rogen just kept it short and sweet and replied, fuck off, you fascist. And that started a back and forth where a lot of strange things are brought up, you know, Ted Cruz mentioned that he really loves Seth Rogen's movies and asked him if that pisses him off. In the end, it was just wild to me that the only person who was trying to hold Ted Cruz accountable was like the stoner comedy guy of our time. So yeah, I mean, fuck, Mary kill, Lil Nas X versus the Catholic Church, uh, Cardi B versus Candace Owens and Seth Rogen versus Ted Cruz. What would you do? Okay, it's got to be fuck Lil Nas X versus the church. There's just so much raw sexual energy involved in that conflict, both from the church and Lil Nas. Nas X. I mean, you can only be that upset at Lil Nas X if at some level you have broiling sexual tension underneath. It is so wildly palpable. So fuck. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, I, w- I would then, I would, I would marry the Candace Owens 
uh, Cardi B situation, just because I feel like there's a lot there. You know, it's a very married drama. See, that's like the kind of thing where if you were married to that, you would be on Real Housewives of something and it would be just constant, you know, content. Oh, yeah. Real Housewives of the Race Traders. Yeah, it would be fantastic. It would be. <laughs> and then it, there's just so much to learn. I want to know more about this husband. I want to learn more about this tweet. And you learn more about each other when you're married. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's what I that's what I would pick for Mary. Uh, kill Ted Cruz and Seth Rogen because I think it's kind of boring. You know, <laughs> come on. Fuck off, you fascist. A million 15 year olds with sideways haircuts say that to someone every day. <laughs> that's true. It wasn't really that inventive. It wasn't. And I've seen his pottery. He's a creative guy. Yeah. You know what I mean, you could have you could have stretched a little more. Like there. knowing Seth Rogen, we know he's capable of so much more. Yeah. Yeah. We're not mad. We're just disappointed. Oh, yeah. OK, we'll see. We're not mad or just disappointed as how I think that I would feel in any marriage. And so <laughs> I think I would marry that situation because it's like there's it's nothing like so crazy dramatic. Like I wouldn't have to like bring my kids into this crazy divorce. It's just kind of like mom and dad are fighting and uh, random stuff from the past is being brought up as like unrelated arguments. Like me being like, I liked your movies and I bet you hate that. Like that's that's so to me, that's like the essence of marriage. It's boring. And I think that's a good thing. I think it's a good thing that it's boring. And um, it's just, you know, it, it's it's very marriage to me. I would kill Cardi B versus Candace Owens because it's like, I don't need to be, I don't need to be, this is to me, I'm like, why am I seeing this? Like, it's, I was just like, I don't need to be here for this. Like the two of you need to go to like, you need to go to, you know, some sort of like Dr. Phil needs to have you on or something, the two of you and like settle that. Like that is not for me to get involved with, you know, me walking into that, it's already a disaster waiting to happen. I don't think that like I should do that to myself. And I also like think that they have a lot of work to do before they, they're ready for uh, to open up that situation to marriage or sex. You know? you know what? If there's anything I've learned, it's that the best marriages have secrets. And, uh, you know, so, I mean, I'll, I'll agree to disagree with you there. Uh, yeah. But, you I know, mean, we'll still be friends. I think it's fine. I think we're looking for different things out of marriage. You know, you're looking for, you know, secrets and drama and scandal. And I'm looking for like boring, hating someone. Uh, yeah. So two different things, two different, uh, two different ways of figuring out this thing we call life. See, like Cardi B versus Candace Owens. Like I would love to watch that on TV. I don't want it to be my life. You desire fame. You little liar. I know you do. <laughs> Come on. Yes, you do. What is but this? Seth Rogen versus Ted Cruz is fame too. It's just it's a uh, different kind of fame. It's comfortable fame. <laughs> it's wearing sweats fame. You don't want that. It's your glamorous ass. <laughs> Why are we lying? <laughs> Uh, I feel like what's in between there is like Chrissy Teigen and all of Twitter. Oh, <laughs> that's like the intermediary between those two situations. Well, I was involved kind of with Chrissy Teigen based drama, too. I had I had a flop period. Wait, I know she shared one of your videos, right? Yeah, she shared one of my videos. And then a lot of white people on the left misunderstood my intention. Uh, and so I was leapt upon and I got a whole bunch of like threatening messages and stuff. And one white white girl whose name I don't remember, but she posted a picture of me on her Twitter and like a bunch of people I knew followed her and it was so embarrassing. And I was like, oh my God. So I locked my account for like a week, Uh, but we came back and now I have twice as many followers as that stinky, stinky white woman. So uh, we're in a good place. She is stinky. Listen, you don't have to go in person to smell her to know she's stinky. To know she's stinky. Some people you just know they're stinky. You feel it in your gut. Yeah. And I I have like the same thing has happened to me too sometimes where like I posted things that were so clearly jokes to me. And then white people like white communists are like this awful liberal shit. And I'm like, what? Like, who do you think you are? <laughs> who do you think you're? And it's a different thing than the racists because you always get racist comments. You oh, know what yeah. I mean? The racists it's- don't make me as mad because I'm like, oh, you're you're like, you just like, we are so not coming from the same. We don't have the same end goals. Yeah, but we it's don't like- run in the same circles. Like, mm-hmm. who cares? But it's like the white leftists who like want to be so they want to be the wokest people on earth and like don't can't accept that like there's some things they don't understand. They, those people truly, like sometimes I will get, like, they will say all sorts of stuff about me. And I'm like, where did you get this from? What are you talking about? They were like, they thought I earnestly was saying that I wanted to sleep with like Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. And I was like, one click on my profile and you'll know that's, that's a joke. Like, you'll see that. It's like you, (laughs) 
when Chrissy shared my video, I had someone comment and this is back when, okay, this is back when I had maybe, I don't know, you know, a couple thousand followers or whatever. Someone commented and they were like, we don't need the ultra rich like Vinnie Thomas and Chrissy Teigen telling us. <laughs> and I was like, bitch, you don't know who I am. I don't even know who I am. Why are you pretending that I'm a billionaire living it? What are you talking about? It's You're hilarious. a member of the Illuminati now. Apparently, I wish... You lost an ally when Chrissy Teigen left Twitter last week. That's true. I got to level with you. And she was trying to defend me. So like, I felt bad. Oh, that's sweet of her. That's sweet of her to try. Yeah, but uh, it it didn't help. (laughs) (laughs) So you've kind of been married to Chrissy Teigen versus Twitter. That's true. Yeah, I have. And you're ready to level up. And I'm ready to level up. Yes. (laughs) I would also fuck Lil Nas X versus the Catholic Church. That's obviously the fuck. We all would. Very clearly. Like the issue here is that I think the Catholic Church, the conservatives were turned on and they hate that. They hate that they were turned on by this. And I think like this satanic panic legacy, it's always been a sexy thing. Like from the start when it was like old rock songs, like there was some chord, there was some chord progression that the Catholic Church like didn't allow because they thought it was like devilish. Like it's always been like fun music is sacrilegious. And I think that's like, it's it's like sexy and rebellious to yeah. be associated with the fun music. You know, a lot of the stars who have gotten in this same beef with the Catholic Church are some of my favorites. We got like Madonna, Lady Gaga, like Led Zeppelin, like all of these icons have been, you know, at the center of satanic panic. And I think it's sexy. (laughs) I think that if like white suburban moms aren't mad at you, you can't be a sex symbol. You know, like fighting hard enough. Yeah. yeah. And then it's also like Nas took it to to a whole other level that was campy, you know, so beyond like just being sexy and, you know, forbidden, it was also intentionally corny and funny at parts. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the whole situation was amusing. <laughs> yeah. It was like to not even see that or pretend like it doesn't exist or like this is a serious treatise on demonic convergence. That was a man in a devil suit. Why are we playing this game? <laughs> to me, that was like if um, it was like very Ryan Murphy style to me, like it was like glee, at, but put it in hell. Exactly. Almost. Like something about that felt that way to me. And I just think those people don't have a sense of humor, so they can't see it. And um, I also just think like Lil Nas X is like so funny. Yeah. Like he he is, you know, everyone's like he was a barb. Like you can't, you can't own him. <laughs> and like he got into a fight with Caitlyn Bennett. I thought that was so funny. Shitty pants. <laughs> yeah. Like I just. It was so, and you know, he had this set up, you know, because the reaction's predictable. So I'm <laughs> sure he had memes at the ready up. Yeah. before this even happened. And he might have even had a little shitty pants response ready for her because <laughs> uh, he popped out with that quick. And that was funny. His PR team like had just, it planned out for like every possible person with the reaction, like what to do, like any given response they had. Yeah. He just called her shitty pants. Nothing else. It was beautiful. I love it when insults are like, you know, sashimi. Like it's just the word. No frills or anything. It's just the word and nothing else. And it was perfect. Yeah, he he really keeps it simple and punchy with the insults. Exactly. And the kids, the kids love it. It's great. The kids love it. There was a video that was going around where people were like, this is so bad because his audience is children. And it was like a video of him saying Old Town Road to like kindergartners. And it was like supposed to be, it was supposed to be like upsetting. And I looked at it and I was like, oh, like, um, that's so cute. It's so cute. He's singing to little kids and like, oh, like he's this like really cool, like black gay, like celebrity. And like, they just like so yes. many kids have like someone to look up to. And that's so cute. Little and homosexuals just- <laughs> in the audience snapping their chubby little fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Go I, ahead. I have loved the meme that's like I'm so glad kids these days have Lil Nas X because all we had growing up was blank and it's like the pictures of like strange things from childhood and it's like <laughs> um, my favorite one was 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 from Glee and then there's like the Ryan and in, in a high school musical and like all those things it's just, it's just so funny to me because truly like they were it was all corny it was all really corny and this this is like hot yeah for sure I think it's it's also just funny seeing all the, the pastors and everything go down and list all the details of the video which they clearly intensely watched and wrote down for later oh you know you you know i wasn't taking no notes okay i like the video but i wasn't taking notes yeah that's another so. that's a whole another level i watched i consumed it and then i moved on exactly my day things to do you know those pastors they have married lil Nas X, uh <laughs> video situation like they are deep 
deeply entangled with it. I, it's just so funny to me how much they care about it. If you, if you can't stop your kids from watching that, then maybe you should just work on like, like the parental controls on your, on your internet. Or better yet, go get involved with the Amish community. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like leave, leave the modern world behind because clearly you don't need it. You're not going to be able to stop your ridiculous little kids. (laughs) And who cares? Honestly, they're watching worse anyway. (laughs) Read the Bible, the Bible nasty. (laughs) The Bible actually, really is like lots of like sex and violence and like gore an entire woman turns into salt and (laughs) falls apart I mean yeah I mean like I think it's I think the bible is really like sexy content literatica oh yeah (laughs) literatica (laughs) literatica yummy oh my god (laughs) literature erotica literatica oh I love it yeah I got that I'm I'm gonna put that in my book of affirmations But, you know, I remember when I was a kid, like all the stuff that my parents wouldn't let me watch, like Lady Gaga was like, I love her. And I, my parents wouldn't let me watch her music videos because they were also like, you know, scandalous. So mm-hmm. at night, I'd, I had parental controls on my iPod touch. And at night when my mom would charge her phone in the kitchen, I would scurry into the kitchen and go to my mom's phone, watch her music videos, erase the history and scurry back into bed. Oh my gosh. I remember that. I remember watching a show that I wasn't allowed to watch and I had on the remote, you go and you put on an innocent show. And then when your parents, it's like they're coming up the stairs, you hit the, the reverse button and go back and you go back to the last show. And it's like, oh, I wasn't watching. I wasn't allowed to watch Pokemon. Most, I feel like if you grew up in an evangelical home, you weren't allowed to watch Pokemon because of the word evolution. Really? Oh yeah, I wasn't. And a lot of, this is a common experience experience. Uh-huh. Uh, if you grew up in a veggie tale home, you weren't allowed to watch Pokemon because of the word evolution. Not unironically, I was able to watch like Walking with Dinosaurs, okay, which is about evolution. Yeah. Can you tell me more about the uh, evolution and Pokemon and the problems that it caused? I would love to. <laughs> uh, so again, this is, this is an evangelical thing. If you grew up in, in the youth pastor style community, there are just certain forbidden shows. And the reasons aren't super fleshed out. You know, Harry Potter was on the list uh, Mm -hmm. because of uh, witchcraft and, you know, whatever. But it was also a Pokemon just because they thought it was pushing an agenda of evolution. It was the word evolution. Uh, And you go, you do some research on a website, you know, some fundamentalist Christian Mm -hmm. mom website. And it'll say something like, don't watch this. This gets a Jesus score of four because (laughs) it uses the word evolution and is indoctrinating the kids. Nothing about Pokemon is scientific. I don't know if you knew this. It's like not in the real world at all. So No, it's not. A a, a large vertebrate cannot, in fact, fit into a little ball (laughs) and survive like that. Here, we call that torture. Like, it's (laughs) it's unhealthy. So, like, it's just funny because it goes to show some people are even, I at a point was, my family was so removed from the texture of reality Mm -hmm. and so disconnected from like what other people are doing that you're kind of just doing your own thing and making your own rules about what is and isn't good even if they don't really make sense (laughs) i love your face right now it's amazing (laughs) i love it i was a lot of faces i'm making (laughs) (laughs) oopsie (laughs) it's funny (laughs) it's a good face um yeah so you were allowed to watch shows about dinosaurs oh yeah i i love animals i love zoology and evolution yeah. and stuff so i watched animal planet discovery channel incessantly and as mm-hmm. a consequence i'm like addicted to all of this content but that's where you actually learn about evolution and that wasn't a problem you know it was just like it, just weird rules luckily my parents they lightened up were your parents like the kind who would have had outrage over cardi b and lil nas x <laughs> i i i don't know if they'd be outraged i just don't think they particularly care but i feel like that's most parents i mean they definitely would have let me watch it when i was a kid but i don't think most parents would yeah. let their kids watch this video so you know is what it is yeah it's just weird little rules you know you get kind of trapped in your head about and then eventually you move on parents have all sorts of little weird little rules like i had shows that my parents didn't let me watch because there was like dumb people in it like who were spongebob yeah i wasn't allowed to watch spongebob that was on my list too i wasn't allowed to watch things where like people's parents were mean to them so that they hated their parents and it was justified jimmy neutron like a lot of shows (laughs) like that i wasn't allowed to watch most phineas and ferb was like the only disney channel show we were allowed to watch (gasps) oh 
Not Sweet Life? I watched it, but I wasn't allowed to technically. Oh my God. I think Sweet Life gave me kind of a fondness for nerds because I was so in love with Cody. I was like, he's so smart and he's so good. and he's so sweet. He's so sensitive. And everyone loved Zach. And I was always a Cody girl. And I think that, you know, gave me, you know, it gave me better taste. Not that I say I, I don't think I have the best. But, <laughs> you know, I think it it was better. You know, I started off on a better, a better start. But honestly, if I was a parent, I'd be super cautious about what my kids were watching too. Yeah. My next door neighbor, like she had, I was the oldest in my family and my next door neighbor, she- I'm so sorry. She had- <laughs> You know, I was the guinea pig. Yeah, I'm so like, what a shame. My brother I got to watch so much more stuff than I did. Yeah, that's always how it goes, man. It's always how it is. For you, it's the first one. Is, oh yeah, I'm I'm the youngest. Okay, I'm, I have one older brother, and it was with everything though. Like he had a strict even bedtime until he was way older than I did. And you know, when I was in middle school, I just went to bed whenever I wanted. He was so pissed about it. Because totally. And it's also was upsetting to me because my brother, he would follow the rules so much more anyway. Like he doesn't care to break them the way that I was like eager to. So it was like wasted on him. And it really <laughs> kind of upset me. Yeah. But my, my next door neighbor, who was like one of my really good friends, she had an older brother of like six years. So she she was my age, but she got to do way more stuff than I got to and like was allowed to watch way more things. So I would just go to her house and watch that stuff there and then go back home and be like, I was watching Arthur. <laughs> oh, it's always Arthur. Arthur is the 100% always approved show. Everyone loves Arthur. But remember, do you remember when Mr. Ratburn was gay? He came out, he got <laughs> married. And that was like a whole thing. Like Alabama pulled Mr. Ratburn's coming out story from the TV. <laughs> I love the news now. Alabama pulls Mr. Ratburn from TV. What a weird <laughs> headline. <laughs> but yeah, it turns out Mr. Ratburn is a big old homosexual. <laughs> like, who cares? So I think so many of the characters in Arthur were gay to me. Like Francine. Francine oh, had Francine. to be a lesbian. There's Francine no way was she a wasn't a lesbian. lesbian. <laughs> yeah. Francine was a lesbian. I low-key think Muffy was. Muffy was too. Muffy was at least bisexual. Oh yeah. Yeah. Muffy was like a wealthy little bisexual. Uh Buster. Buster was a gay who grew up in an evangelical home. I can tell mm-hmm. you that for a fact. And then Binky. Binky's a big old bear. Yeah. I think DW also could be bisexual. She's got like the bratty bisexual energy, you know? <laughs> DW is just mean enough to yeah. <laughs> be bisexual. She's like such, she's such a brat. I think it's like very. I love just applying stereotypes to bisexual. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think it's I the mean, funniest it's thing. It's fun. It's There's fun. just so many of them. You know what I mean? everyone's a bisexual so like whatever you say is true like i think there's just so many people are because there's so many ways to be bisexual exactly you can be one percent into women and 99 percent into non-women and you're still you can still call yourself bisexual you know that's the way it goes that's the law you can say whatever you want it applies to some bisexual somewhere something does that's true. You know, people get really mad. People can't. I get canceled all the time for That's my takes on bisexuality. Once I said I'm pro bisexual erasure because I want to erase myself from the earth. And I got so people were DMing me like this is so biphobic of you. And I was like, I'm literally just talking about myself. <laughs> See, this is why I'm never worried about being canceled. Like it's all cancel culture. This, it's like if you're a comedian and you posted something on Twitter, you've been canceled Yeah, a, a couple of times. Like you've been canceled. Yeah. It's it sucks for a little while. And then you just kind of move on to the next thing because people forget so quick they like to pretend they're mad they don't give a fuck it's so hard not to respond that's something uh, i worked on for a while is not if some guy just posts something that's and he's a dick and he's like go you know go back to syria isis which i've gotten before perplexingly uh it's it's always my instinct to just like immediately like retweet that but i look and he's just like some guy like I, i don't care yeah it's giving them attention yeah I used to respond so much more. Now I don't. But this past week, I was making a comment like about Asian hate. Some man, he was like, why? Like he quote tweeted and was like, why am I watching someone who's not Asian? Like talk about Asian problems. And I replied and I was like, I am Asian. And he was like, you're Asian the way a Canadian is American. And I was like, what does that even mean? (laughs) Let me let me do the math here. Let me crunch the numbers. If you're Asian in the way a Canadian is American. So I think he's saying. And this is another controversy, by the way, I might have a little familiarity with Mm -hmm. because I posted something about I I referred to the United States as America. And I had two guys from South America in my comments immediately. 
totally incensed that I referred to the U.S. as America because mm-hmm. they see America as a word to just refer to the two continents, continents together, yeah. which to me, I don't want to shit on anyone's culture, but that's ridiculous. Uh, if I refer to America like colloquially, people understand what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't make any sense. If you're Asian, you're from Asia. Yeah. It doesn't make sense to me. It's tacky. And that person's going to hell. Like, I think that what they were trying to say is that like, South Asians are Asian, yes, but like when we're talking about Asians, we're not referring to them the same way when we say America, Canada is technically in North America, but we're not referring to Canada. Also, it was it was it was a white man who was saying all this. I'm like, why? Why are you? He was white, too. Ah! (laughs) I think white people pretended white people sticking up for people (laughs) without people even asking in the weirdest ways is odd. It goes back to like demanding apologies from people who weren't even like who never offended you in the first place. You know what I mean? Like, don't speak for someone. Just let them. Speak oh, themselves. oh, they go crazy. They love to be like, abolish the police, but we're going to become the police now. We're going to just take their jobs and come around. The and- Twitter police. Nah, 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 nah. No, my original tweet that he responded that to was about like this other white man who tweeted this whole thing that was like, why are black people defending Asian people? Like Asian people are more racist, we're more racist to black people than white people are. And I was like, why are you a white person tweeting this? Like, absolutely <laughs> not. If someone black said that i'd be like okay yeah cool why are you a white person saying that (laughs) it's so it's so funny the the internet is ridiculous you got two white people (laughs) arguing about racism with with each other (laughs) it doesn't make sense they don't go together it's odd it's profoundly odd and it's all for these little these little crumbs these little crumbs of clout yeah uh, from uh, other little rats, you know, <laughs> just they're like giving cheese. They're like, yeah, out little cheese, little well, little jumping up and eating it. Yeah. Little rat cheese. It's nothing. They're just saying buzzwords and hoping, you know, someone else likes it five times, and then passes it along. And mm-hmm. then eventually it'll disappear into the ether and we will all live and then we will die. And none of it will <laughs> have made a bit of difference. So I, I, I think we should all keep that in mind before we tweet anything. Remember that we're all gonna die. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's sweet. I think it is. Would you rather? Would you rather? Would you rather? Let's play a game of Would You Rather. I'm sure you and your mother and your brother and your boss and your cousin have all heard about the container ship blocking the Suez Canal last week. It has now been unblocked, but I found out some new information this morning, which is that apparently Egypt, which is where the Suez Canal is, has a centuries long curse called the Curse of the Pharaohs, where basically anyone who disturbs King Tut's mummy will have bad luck or death or worse. And there was supposed to be on April 3rd, a Pharaoh celebration and bodies were being moved, like mummies were being moved at the time. And there's a lot of conspiracy there that like this ship got blocked as a punishment for like someone disturbing a mummy somewhere. This is uh, leading into this would you rather. So I want to know if you would rather never ever receive an online order on time ever again, because something always happens with the shipping. It gets lost somewhere or something's confused. You just never know. You just kind of have to wait and expect it to come or at all times have King Tut's snickering little voice inside your head all day telling you mean things about yourself. Oh, I was going to immediately immediately pick King Tut until you said telling me mean things. Mm-hmm. I was going to be like snickering little voice. He sounds hilarious. <laughs> I love to have him in there. Because you know King Tut is like an annoying teenager too. King Tut is like a... Have you seen the facial reconstructions? <laughs> King Tut is the result of uh, incest, I believe. And so he had, um, you know, generations of... He had, he had some issues, King Tut. They reconstruct him. He looks exactly like the Peanuts from the Proud Family movie. His head, <laughs> his head is shaped weird. He got an over good overdrawn lip mm-hmm. strange fella so if he's saying mean things i don't like that can i talk back to king tut i mean yes but like i don't think that that will really change what he's saying to you oh my god then i would probably i feel like i'd be driven mad so i'd have to go with shipping i just have to be forced to shop locally Ugh. that would be like a good thing in the long run i think because it would you know wean you off of amazon uh, the world you know it'd wean the world off of amazon exactly you meet some little shopkeeps some little little shopkeeps on the block 
It'd be fantastic. You'd just like get to know, you'd be supporting small businesses. You just, you'd go to the store and they'd be like, hey, what's up? Like, how are you? How's the project you're working on? And they'd oh yeah, the project. I'm building birdhouses <laughs> or something. There's just a store in my neighborhood that the guy just sells loose electronics. So whenever I need a wire or something, I go there and I ask, I'm looking for this wire and I'll show him a picture and I'll bring out a Sterlite bin full of loose wires and I'll pull out a bunch of wires that match my description and then he'll, he'll give you prizes on each of them. And you pick Pick your favorite wire. It's amazing. What's like an example of a project where you just need a loose wire? I needed an HDMI cable. Okay. <laughs> okay. You know, loose I wire. thought you I thought you meant literally like a piece of wire. <laughs> no. Like I'm not making a barbed fence. <laughs> <laughs> I just I was like, you're like rewiring a computer or something. I was like, that's fancy. I think they should have a service where like, you know how they like make keys that are like the same as the key you own where they duplicate keys. They I need do. to have a duplicate weird, weird cables because sometimes like things you own are really weird shaped and you lose the one charger and then you can never charge the thing again or use it again. It's yeah. not like a USB or like whatever. And I think like it's hard to go out of your way and like find that again. If you lose that, they should just have a service where like they kind of like mold it inside of there and make you a new cable. Man, I got to tell you, it's awfully dangerous of you to just say this out loud on your podcast because someone's going to rob you of that idea immediately. I'm not capable of a, I'm not capable of doing that. Hey, don't talk about my friend like that. You can do whatever you want to do. <laughs> you could do it. Thank you so much. Well, I think that's King Tut in my head telling me that I can't. That's right. Bury him. See, I think that if I had King Tut's voice in my head all day, I would just like I would milk it as like um, the way that like Mary milked Jesus. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? What? <laughs> I have King Tut living through me. Oh, like the avatar. <laughs> that makes sense. I would become a sensation. Why are you assuming people would believe you? <laughs> like... Um, Because I... I'm charming. <laughs> if, if someone ran up to me and said, I hear King Tut in my head and he's telling me horrible things about myself, I would be like, get out of this Wendy's and never come back. I'm calling the police. Well, I, w- I wouldn't say it like that. You know, I would kind of like do some comedy where I'm, you know, kind of doing, <laughs> doing King Tut. And then eventually I would be like, I'd, I would win. I would win favor with many. Chrissy Teigen will return to Twitter to retweet my comedy. And then after months of those videos, I would release a statement saying this whole time I have had King Tut speaking to me in my head. He says such horrible things about me, but I thought I would channel it into greater good. Like, here's what he says. And then I'll release <laughs> a list. He always says, Yamini, I ruled Egypt at age 15 and you are 23 and you uh, have done nothing. <laughs> You've wasted your life, you stupid kid. <laughs> 15 then, like, is. For King Tut, 15 was like 86. Yeah. You got to look up these reconstructions. <laughs> it's um, it's unacceptable. It's funny it's because the, oh, he in, he's historically thought of as, like, hot. Uh-uh. Like, Avin Jogia played him in the movie. Right? <laughs> okay. But no, not at all. I've been, And that's, that's a running trend with historical movies, though, is, like, they're always, they appear to be way more attractive than they are. Especially like old European movies where they got good teeth. Not in a million years. I think that, I don't know. Sometimes I think about this. The white people who like really are against like race mixing or whatever. Do they just not want people to be (laughs) playing a dangerous game, man? Like, I just think that the more genetic diversity there is, like the more. That's true. Objectively, that is better for the population. The more genetically diverse population is, the healthier it is. Yeah. I'm just saying like those like like the Amish people, again, back to Amish, they only populate within their own community. That's out there. That information's out there. And so like they have, you know, like a lot of health problems. That's what they got health problems too just because they don't like i'll never forget watching breaking amish and the one girl was talking about she had dentures and a lot of people her age i guess have dentures because instead of going to a dentist because they don't want to pay to see a dentist they just have someone in their town who yanks teeth out of your mouth with no anesthetic so this poor girl didn't have any teeth because she when she was a little girl she had them all physically pulled out of her mouth and then she got dentures that didn't fit so her mouth was filled with sores oh my body i just got like a chill on my body it was so bad because you thought about it it was like like i got it's like boss body that's body horror Mm -mm, not me could never be amish not that they let me <laughs> black um <laughs> but but i wouldn't if i could <laughs> let me tell you there's an episode of arthur where they go to like an amish uh i don't know what do they call it 
colony, an Amish town, uh, community, community, an Amish community, yeah. an Amish community, and um, Buster decides that he wants to be Amish like he loves yeah. it there and then he like freaks out because he realizes he can't wear his like zip up hoodie I mean they let Buster in Buster's white they <laughs> let Buster in Buster is like white as paper Buster, Buster is. is white Buster could be Amish <laughs> they wouldn't let Arthur and his friends look color behind <laughs> in the Amish community <laughs> But I just remember that clearly. I was like, my that's like most of my <laughs> knowledge about Amish <laughs> people is from that episode of Arthur and Orange is the New Black. Okay, realistically, my answer is I would rather just never receive an online order on time ever again. But I think it's fun to entertain King Tut snickering in my head all day. I could capitalize on it. Why do I believe that I could capitalize on that, but I couldn't make a business where we make cables? Truly, exactly. <laughs> it's all about confidence. It's this whole industry. You just need to believe in yourself. Manifest success. Okay, the second would you rather. So Ariana Grande has just been announced as a new judge on The Voice. So, you know, I don't know. The Voice has been around for a while and there's always been kind of like a random mix of judges. What was that face you're making? I want to know. Oh, because I, the, they have a very specific ratio on The Voice of judges. It's always three of them have to be white. Mm -hmm. One of them has to be black. And usually one of the white, like one of them has, at least one of them has to be a woman. Uh so I can already tell you that Ariana is probably going to replace. It's either Kelly or Nick Jonas. It's Nick Jonas she's replacing. Okay, yeah. So there you have it. It's always, they never, 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 never. And they've had a million seasons. Have they had two, two brown or black people on at the same time? It's so hilarious and intentional mm -hmm. because, you know, they sat in a boardroom at some point and they were like, Okay, we got to make sure this appeals to the American audience. Let's make sure that there aren't too many of them at once. It might scare people. This is a family show. It's always got to be three white, one black. Always. They can never change. Blake Shelton's also been there since the beginning of time. So it's just kind of Blake Shelton plus two other white people and a black person. That's true. Yeah. Kick, kick Blake out of there, man. It's obsolete. It's also funny to me because they always have like two pop people but it's always like one pop person who's actively creating and one pop person who just has not in decline on anything in a while which that's what Ke that's kelly clarkson right now we're not about to besmirch kelly on this podcast i, I love kelly clarkson listen behind these hazel eyes a bank <laughs> i'd want she hasn't done anything in a while and i you know i miss her that's what i'm saying that's true but you know, obviously Ariana Grande is like one of the biggest pop stars of our time. But like I said, like there's the Kelly Clarkson's of the world who, you know, she's like famous for, you know, being a judge on The Voice and having a talk show and stuff now and less for her own like music career. Um, so would you rather be that like famous for being a judge on something and less for your own actual career or just have like a kind of moderately successful career in the field you choose never like getting you never get really like that threshold of like what you want. I would say moderately successful. I'm fine with that. But I also let's not besmirch Miss Clarkson. She's still more famous for her music. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think but Gwen Stefani, maybe with the new generation is but I don't think the new generation is watching The Voice. I think, yeah. you know, it's mostly moms. So actually, I I love Gwen's funny because I she's a hometown hero over here. She's from Orange County, California. And so am I. You want to hear a story about The Voice? I would love to. I was waiting for you to ask. Um, I was a huge fan of American Idol. So big, such a big fan back in the day. So when The Voice came on, I was like, okay, this is something that, you know, it's replacing it and it, it has a cool concept and it could be really good. I watched the first season so intently. I had my queer revolution watching The Voice because there was a lesbian woman who came on and she auditioned and I was just like, why do I? Why do I like care? I don't even think she's that good. Like, I just, I like her a lot. <laughs> and then I just started doing all this gay research. I love this. I love this. To realize you were queer, you had to crack open the books. Mm -hmm. You had to like, you had to like identify it. Oh yeah. <laughs> I watched coming out story videos. I, uh, I was like on Tumblr, like, a, how do you know you're gay? <laughs> of course you were on Tumblr. Of course you were on Tumblr. <laughs> oh, it was, bad. it was bad. It was bad. That website has created so many. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't be who I am without Tumblr. Tumblr, I think. Did you abandon it after the great calamity? The porn leaving? Yeah, I want to say it. <laughs> I think I abandoned it before that. I think we all did. 
I feel like anyone who was complaining that there wasn't porn on Tumblr, not the type of person you want to be around. All the time. Why do you need Tumblr for porn? Yeah, go to the bookstore like everyone else. You better break out a pencil and a piece of paper and get to sketching my hand. Let's <laughs> write your own, like start producing it, you know? Make- wow, write your own. That's beautiful. You know that there's, I saw a job, like a job posting for someone to write scripts for their OnlyFans. I, I never thought about that before, but it's like, I get. I guess maybe they don't have a background in improv, <laughs> like. Because I- you know, like some, like those, a lot of like porn has like these like, crazy storylines, and I guess like these people, you know, they're the perform. They just perform what they're told to perform. But yeah, like if you're going into it on your own, like maybe you don't have the knowledge of like how to write the the stories. And so someone was like hiring a job, someone to do that. And I just, I think that must be a, such a fun job. Like, I think that oh, I must be incredible. so fun. I could imagine the collaboration. Yeah. You no. Know? So you have to sigh and moan here. No, no, no. <laughs> then again, later. You walk in wearing this costume and like you take the hat off his head and you like shove it down your pants and you sleep. Oh, yeah. And you bite your lip and you, you moan. In a, in a- yeah. <laughs> you sp- you spill your Nesquik all over your titties. <laughs> And now your titties are covered in Nesquik. Okay, now we're getting into some audio erotica over here. Okay, my apologies. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome, you guys. Um, w- that kind of stuff, it costs a lot of money in a lot of places. But su- support support actual sex workers and pay them money. You know, where, uh, we do support sex workers. Yes, we love them. Okay. Truth or dare? I'm going to go truth. Why not? I'm going to go truth. Okay. Um, who's the most famous person whose DMs you've slid into? And if you can't think of one who's like, then think of the opposite who slid into yours. Who's the most famous person who slid into mine? I slid into when I was first making videos, I slid into Ashley. Well, it wasn't a slide, like a romantic slide. It was just like a, hey, look at my video slide. Ashley Nicole Black, I sent her one of the videos I made, mm-hmm. which in retrospect was so stupid. <laughs> I don't understand why I even did it. Th- that was a while ago. And then uh, someone slid into mine. I had uh, Bahito. Bahito, the guy with the the big the big smile. He's a big uh, light-skinned guy with a smile and he makes uh, funny videos sometimes. Yeah, he he said you were very funny. He slid in my DMs, and that was nice. Yeah. Oh, that's so sweet. Truth or dare? Dare. Okay, I dare you to recreate at least three of Meghan McCain's hairstyles, and then you gotta post them on Twitter with a caption that is completely unironic, without a hint of irony. I think it would be fun to do this now. Okay, then do, do it now. Three of them? Is three too many? Just do your favorite. Let me look up Meghan McCain hairstyles. She did, um, she did the, there's a braid down the middle, there's the two little buns. There's a braid down the side. One of my, honestly, one of my favorites is this really horrible one. Oh, buns and tendrils. Yes. Yeah, that one's great. I think like my hair texture is so different from hers that I think it could be pretty hilarious. Fantastic. Okay, I think I need another, I think I need another hair tie for this. So I'll go grab one. Oh, wait. Finally, she's gone. So let's see. We're going to start by middle parting. Mm -hmm. I have it like. It's like flipped, so I can't, I'm like- I don't want your excuses. Megan McCain wouldn't make these excuses, you're right. No, she wouldn't. She would simply blame the non-existent Asian co-host. Oh yes, she would. It's already perfect. (laughs) Why is this so funny? Okay. It's crazy how quickly you're killing this. Like, honestly, I'm shocked. (laughs) I've never had hair that long, so like- (laughs) It, hey, wait. In my head, it would take longer, but you did it in two seconds. I think it's my theater kid background because I had to do a lot of weird hairstyles for performance, you know? That's bun number one. Are you kidding me? This is so spot on. Let's try to get that to match the other one. I don't know. Yams. No, you didn't yams. <laughs> you sticking it to them. It's so good. What does she have that I don't? She got a famous daddy. This actually looks kind of, this is kind of slick on you. <laughs> I got to level with you. If you made these braids in the front. Should I do that? Okay. Yeah, nobody can tell you nothing if those are braids in the front. Look at how quickly you're braiding. Megan McCain has someone to do it for her, but I didn't have. Not all of us are spoiled like that. You know, an on-call. Braidist. Braidist, yeah. I had to be my own. 
There we go. The way I want to see you on Pen15 with this hairstyle right now, it's like, it's out of sight. Pen15 is my favorite. Like, it's so, it evokes such real memories in me. They're not all good, but. Yeah, but they're real. And that's what makes it an excellent show. And I'm surprised it has, has it won big awards? I don't think so, but it should. I'm shocked. I just forget Maya and Anna are. Adults. This is so spot on. Okay, what did you want me to do with it after? Take a picture and <laughs> say something that's just like, just genuine, you know? You know, what? maybe just post it with no caption at all. Maybe <laughs> just post it. I can almost guarantee someone is going to post a picture of her in the comments. I want to see how fast it happens. Do you like this? Do I like it? I love it. It's perfect. <laughs> okay. Tweet. <laughs> Amazing. Should I do the rest of the show with this hair in? Oh, yeah, obviously. You should. look like this fantastic little court jester. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> oh, my God. I feel so powerful right now. Mm. <laughs> you look powerful. <laughs> like all right. Okay. <laughs> Truth or dare? What should I do? God, I'm scared of the dare, but maybe I'll, let's, let's go for a dare. Okay. I want you to text someone that you haven't talked to since like high school age and tell them that you thought of them because you remembered like something that you both did together. And I want you to make up whatever that thing is, but it can't have actually happened with that person. Like you just like, I remember the time that we did blah, 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 but it's like not real. I don't know if I have anyone on my phone like that, man. <laughs> it doesn't have to be a high school person. Like maybe someone you just like haven't talked to in a while. Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to text. Is this kid? I think I have this kid Daniel's number in my phone. What's Daniel's story? Daniel, I went to I went to elementary school with Daniel. And I don't think I've ever texted him once. <laughs> and I got his number in like 2010. Do you think he has your number saved? No, I don't think so. <laughs> So this is going to be fun for yeah. both of us. Let me see if he's even in my contacts anymore. Okay. I do still have his number. Here's what I'm going to text him. It's been a while, but do you remember when we, am I on the right track here? Yes. When we, when we sat on those PBJs, Whoa. on those, on those Smuckers PBJs, oh, uh, this guy, <laughs> this is a, this is a neighborhood boy. This is a hood boy. <laughs> I don't even know how he's going to react to this text. It's been a while, but do you remember when we sat on those Smuckers PBJs? and ran around walmart <laughs> that sounds like a good time for children and we had hella we had hella jelly on our pants <laughs> okay and i'm gonna hit i'm gonna hit send there it is it's all written out beautiful you can't even read it i'm gonna hit send here we go oh god well that's done i don't even know if i have anything as bad as that for you uh truth or dare i'll do truth this time uh let's see here do you have uh do you have a twitter nemesis not like a mean way is there just someone that you're very competitive with Perhaps needlessly. Okay, I have Twitter nemesis. Um, she doesn't know that we're nemeses. That's what I'm looking for, yeah. Okay, well, I, we don't even follow each other. Like, I just have strong feelings about this person. You check in on her every now and then. Yeah. So. yeah. Okay, yeah. Do I, am I supposed to say who that is? Yeah, I would like to okay. know who it is. Okay, um, it's Rachel McCartney. Is that Paul McCartney's wife? Um, she's a comedian. Oh my God, I'm going to like get canceled by the New York, like the, those people. <laughs> um, you know what? I'll go, I'll die on this hill though, because this, this episode has been, I've given you a lot of stories about bisexuality and I'll give you another story about bisexuality. Last summer, Rachel McCartney tweeted something about how Giz there's a story about how Ghislaine Maxwell like ha was creeping on like some young girl. And so, you know, bad, bad, right? Classic Ghislaine, yeah. But Rachel tweeted something that was like, bisexual culture is like dating a 70 year old man and like having threesomes with a 16 year old girl. And everyone was like, obviously, like, what the fuck? Like, that's not bisexual culture. That's like an abuser doing bad things. And she was like, she doubled down on it and replied like, yeah, like you guys are saying all this stuff, but like every bisexual I've ever known has like been creepy and bad. And then she went, she, <laughs> she went off Twitter for a while. Was this not a joke? No, no. Oh, okay. And I made a tick. I made a TikTok about this tweet being like, "This is a bad." This also this happened way before I ever had any ounce of Twitter popularity. So I was just an observer, and I made I've tweeted about it. I made a TikTok about it. Now that this is gross, and when I TikToked about it, people were replying saying that they had like done stand up with her, or, like done taken an improv, like were at UCB with her or whatever, and that she was just like that like she just hated bisexuals and so I I just personally have this vendetta against her where like I see a lot of people I know following her and I'm like I don't I don't know if they know that's there and I know like I'm kind of edging closer towards her follower count 
every day. You know, I don't believe like you should compare yourself to other people like that and be competitive needlessly. I don't think that's good. And I don't think that's healthy. And I want all the people that I care about to succeed too. But her, I do. I do want to out earn uh, her. I love it. Yeah. Beautiful. It's good to know. Wow. I just, I just spilled. This is the most, I think that was the most tea I've ever really spilled on. Um, that's right. You're a truth teller and we love it. Okay. Truth or dare? Uh, let's go. Uh, let's go for a truth. Let's go for a truth. Okay. I guess like on Twitter, what's like a fake rumor that's gone around about you or like something people assume about you that like is weird or like not true. And you like think it's, I'm saying like so much, a, a rumor that's gone around about you and you just don't know why people think that or assume that. Oh, I would say it was definitely the period of time in which people thought I was, I, in which people thought I created a, like a campaign video for Joe Biden. And I was trying to actively get people to vote for Joe Biden. I think that was, I think that was the weirdest, like, like, because I made that video and it's still up on my Instagram. Yeah. Uh, but I made this video where basically I was, I was pretending to be this character that was like, cause there's a very specific kind of white person that's obsessed with like obsessed with theory and obsessed with like mm -hmm. uh, telling people that they're foolish and dumb for doing things, but they also just don't do anything tangible. So I was mocking that person, right? Who does nothing but talk shit about everyone else. And a bunch of white people got viscerally upset at that. And because I was saying that, they assumed I was saying, oh, you know, everyone got to vote for Biden or you're an idiot. Mm -hmm. uh, and so every, you know, they assumed that. And then it got wildly out of control and people tell me to kill myself and stuff. So we moved past it now. But it was, it was probably that. Did they think that like Joe Biden paid you to do that? I think they just thought my intention was like in putting that video out to get more votes for Joe Biden. When I think for any of us, our intention is just to make a funny video about this funny kind of person we see. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's the beginning and end of what we usually intend mm -hmm. to do. But so many people on Twitter think everything is like, everything is discourse. You know, everything yeah. is rhetoric. Everyone's trying to start a conversation. Like sometimes we're just doing things. And I think that's fine. That was, that was before the Chrissy Teigen, uh, you. It was the Chrissy Teigen thing. It was? There was, there were so many issues with that. Wait, there was so many which video? That was the one she shared. I thought it was the like intergalactic. No, she shared a video that I called, I will not be voting for Joe Biden. <laughs> she shared that. Um, and then a lot of people got mad. And then that was that. Before that, she also shared a video I made uh, where I was mocking white teens who use uh, African-American vernacular English really, really badly. Yeah. <clears throat> and that second one, boy, that was a doozy. Because once once someone thinks you're, you're being a political, like public, figure they're, they're in on you that's it um so it's it's nice to just stay in the in the comedy lane every now and then i don't know if that's better or worse than like a juicy personal thing that people assume oh uh, i don't have any juicy personal things i wish i did i don't think i don't put a lot of personal stuff out yeah. on social media so like i don't think anyone would think anything of me that i don't want them to i'm gonna google your name and see and see what um it tells me after i think ethnicity is up there <laughs> fly Twitter, comedian, galactic federation, ethnicity. There it is. Teacher, Indian. <laughs> there it is. Uh, yeah, that's the question. None of that's super juicy. I will tell you, I'm not Indian. I'm not even, I'm not Desi even a little bit. Uh, I'm, I'm not Vinny in the Desi way. I'm Vinny, I'm Vinny in the Italian way. Uh, yeah, my mother is an Italian and my dad's black. So I'm a black Italian. I'm a living manifestation of that bit that Jabuki always does. I think part of the Indian thing comes from your username being Vinay, because it's like Vinay. Oh, I see what you mean. That makes sense. I'm not intentionally <laughs> Indian fishing. Uh, and I would change and I would change the username if I could, but I feel like it's there now. Like, I'm not going to move I it. think only Indian people like see that and jump to that. No, I thought that too. And then you made videos that were clearly like you were... I was like, if you're not black, this is problematic. <laughs> this is an issue. And so I was like, okay, he's probably not. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> that's how I figured it out. <laughs> that's how you put it together. And it's funny because like Indian people will ask me if I'm Indian, particularly Malayali people. Mm -hmm. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Yeah. Yeah, they'll ask. But when they ask, it's nice. And it's, it's fun because, you know, it's like they're potentially identifying me as part of their in-group. Uh -huh. Versus like, I had this other issue where white people were asking me if I was Asif Ali from uh, WandaVision because Vision has, Vision has, he has an Indian coworker who they thought looked like me. So instead of just Googling who Vision's Indian coworker, they were straight up just asking me if I was this person. <laughs> and I'm like, my name is different on my profile. Like, you know, for a fact, it's different. 
it's just a different uh, perspective way of going about things. I think. I think when Indian people do it, they're like excited that you, yeah, they're thrilled. Yeah, I think even knowing, it, I just feel like you could hang. You could hang with the Indians whenever you wanted. You have a, I'm inviting you to hang with us. You know. Yay! What what's the what's the Indian version of a uh, of the cookout? What is it? Garbas. There we go. Garbas. Garbas. You dress up and then there's like food and they're usually at like a high school in a like multi-purpose room at a high school. <laughs> you could hang at the Garba whenever you wanted. Amazing. I'll pull through the Garba. Truth or dare? Dare. Great. Could you depict the extinction of the dinosaurs uh, through an interpretive dance? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with this hairstyle too it's even so oh yeah it's gonna be great it's gonna be flipping all over the place man it's gonna be fantastic can you give me like a like a kind of a subtle hum song for underneath this yeah okay here we go yeah <laughs> she's on the floor now and then she passes out it was amazing you killed it that was weird it was good it was not an out-of-body experience doing that just now all of the listeners i will post the video of that on twitter and you can watch it um in my megan mccain hairstyle thank you so much for joining me today i had a blast talking to you i feel like things got kind of crazy up in here oh no are you kidding me i would do this i would do this anytime amazing whatever yeah yeah is there anything that you want to share with the listeners before we go you know be kind to each other you know be nice and uh do your best at whatever you're doing wow that's so sweet isn't it great that's really sweet if uh no matter what you're trying to do you're trying to open a cable store or have a career living out as King Tut or writing the storylines of OnlyFans, you know, just put passion into whatever you do. You heard it here first. Exactly. And it's going to be great. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs> Goodbye. Thanks so much for joining our pillow fight. See you next time. Pillow Fight is a production by me, Yamini Nambimadam, with music by Greer Baxter.